Okay, good morning or good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you're watching this. Thanks for joining us again. It's been a really good series, a chance for me to meet some of uh, the people in business around Devon. As you know, I'm on a bit of a mission to prove that people in business are nothing like the people on The Apprentice. They are nice, normal human beings trying to do a good thing. And I've got one of them with me here today uh, called PJ. So PJ, it's over to you uh, to tell us all about yourself. So who are you? What do you do? Hello, thank you so much for having me on today. Um, my name is PJ. I'm the founder of Rephrase, which is an organisation that provides healthy relationships and sex education without the awkwardness. And I love it. So the organisation basically exists to help empower young people to be critical thinkers, make informed choices and develop healthy relationship behaviours. So I'm all about taking the awkwardness out of RSC. And as a relationships and sex educator, I help equip young people with the knowledge, attitude and skills that will empower them to develop healthy relationships relationships further down the line so it's all done through down-to-earth interactive workshops and presentations um, and knowing that we're creating safe spaces for open honest conversations that and young people are able to kind of make those informed decisions and think about what they want their aspirations it's just so satisfying because they don't yeah. often think about this stuff so yeah. for me fundamentally it's about safeguarding um, it's about helping them be physically and emotionally safe when it comes to their own experiences of relationships and sex. And I think the other thing is that, of course, this is a conversation that, that you know, from my experience as a teacher, these are, they're in the curriculum, but some teachers will full on avoid addressing the subject of, of things like consent or, or you know, uh, it, because of because of the awkwardness, you know, and so for, to have someone come in to support with that, and even parents, you know, to, I think find it tricky to have these conversations. Yeah, um, so we, I was going to say, we work with state and independent schools, but we also work with um, teachers, parents, youth groups, the YMCA, pregnancy centres, Devon and Cornwall Police, and their staff who work with young people and domestic abuse survivors. Yeah. so there's all sorts of angles where you can actually kind of help empower people to have those conversations yeah it's fantastic and tell us the story which uh which i know from from knowing you but but the the one that's on your website about when you were when your parents were called in for a drastic meeting with the teacher when you were, when you were <laughs> <going there. laughs> it wasn't quite that bad um so <laughs> from the age of 14 i knew that i wanted to work in the field of relationships and sex education and at that point i thought i was going to be a sexual therapist so I was a 14 year old in a Catholic school and we had one remaining nun still teaching us. So you can imagine uh -huh. the horror when I say what I want to do. Um, so I remember one parent's evening in particular and the teacher was sitting opposite my parents and I looking incredibly anxious and very pale. Uh -huh. And she leant across and said, you do realise that your daughter wants to be a sexual therapist. Yeah. And my parents said, yeah, it's fantastic, isn't it? So, <laughs> um, you know, they've been really supportive and it's about just I, just I don't know I, there was a little seed just sown and I think what happened over the years was it dawned me because I'd been working with some year 10 and 11 students and it was a light bulb moment so mm. I actually rather than work with people in therapy where it's already gone wrong further down the line perhaps mm, sure. let's invest in young people let's empower yeah. young people and so that was the beginning of it um and I've never looked back Super uh, pro proactive rather than reactive. I mean, I, yeah. I, there were a lot of evenings where teachers would look anxious and pale. Uh, back <laughs> to my parents, but it was because I'd been so bad at school that they, you know, they, they didn't want to have to tell my parents exactly all the rubbish I'd been getting up to. But <laughs> yeah, um, what have you learned? I mean, it, it's we were just saying before that it's a, you know two or three years that you've since you really launched Rephrase. I mean, what what have you really learned from your time of being in business? It's been a massive learning curve. Um, so I'd say, first of all, never forget your why. Think about mm. what drives you and remember yeah. why you do it and what you love about what you're doing, because mm. the, this will fuel your actions when you have those down days and you will have down those days. Um, I've also realised through social media, don't judge your business success on likes or digital engagement. Yeah, yeah for sure. Out there. And if you don't get a number of likes, you feel like you're failing. And actually what I've noticed is that people watch from afar and um I that they come up to me either in person and they're saying I love what you're posting and what you're doing blah 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 and I'm like well I had no idea because you haven't engaged at all on social media yeah um, and I've had lots of potential clients and now current clients who have said we've been watching you for a while so what they've been doing is just checking out you know they check out your ethos your content the vibe yeah. the person behind the business yeah. and that's 
part of them developing trust in your service offering yeah. and building a working relationship. So yeah. I take comfort from that because when I first started, a lot of the noise I was hearing was all about getting all this likes, you know, the engagement on, on social media, and it's a massive pressure. Um, yeah. So I've kind of learned actually just sit tight, do what you feel you're supposed to be doing, yeah. and you'll end up working with the right clients that need to yeah. work with you. Yeah. I mean, a quick shout out here, but it, there's, there's an amazing book about this by Marcus Sheridan. You know, it's called They Ask, They Ask You Answer, and it's all about your content and so on. And it says actually about 80% of the, the buying journey is done before the person actually talks to you at all. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I think that what you're doing with your content there is, is, is exactly that. You're helping them down the 80% of the journey before they sort of say, actually, yeah, we do need to talk, PJ. Um, what, what, what are some of your sort of mantras or quotes or whatever that, that motivate you then you mentioned about your why but what, what is it that, that really motivates you so um I think empowering young people and just helping them have these conversations for starters because they've got yeah. so many questions and yeah. if we don't answer them we have to ask ourselves who is answering them and it's often pornography so yeah. it's very much about actually enabling them to recognize their self-worth and their value and also saying you've got the right and you deserve to experience healthy relationship because mm -hmm. potentially because of role models or experiences life tells them they don't deserve it and therefore they don't allow themselves to have those positive experiences which is really mm -hmm. sad um and i've got two quotes i love uh, first one is martin luther king jr who says take the first step in faith you don't have to see the whole staircase just take the first step nice. which was really poignant at right at the beginning of my journey because it was terrifying um, I knew it was what I should be doing, but it's still really scary. Um, and the other one is from someone called Andrew Gifford. And they've said, you can't change the world, but you can change a person's world. The more people you help, the more worlds you've changed. And I find that really helpful because particularly with this field, though it's overwhelmingly sad at times. And you kind of feel like, I can't do this. I can't make this difference. But actually, when I reduce my thinking back to every single encounter every single person and the yeah. feedback of the quotes i get quality data from the students and the domestic abuse survivors that is the reason that i'm doing this and so yeah. actually if i break it down to just every person who's impacted it makes me really excited to keep going because i know it's making a difference it's funny isn't it though because it comes with exactly what you said earlier about finding your why um yeah. you know no, it, that buzz that feeling in your gut you know that 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 is the motivation isn't it it's it's that um that deep-seated sort of purpose but what what have you learned about yourself you know what, what have you found out about you know I found that when I became a parent I found out things about myself that I hadn't realized before but you know um and I think sometimes starting a business is a bit like having a baby isn't it but in lots of different ways but you know what, what has it sort of taught you about yourself um, I would say a few things actually there's one I, I am braver than I thought I was um, oh, yeah. I really am because yeah. I, the self-belief was a massive thing and at times it still is um, right. but stepping out into the unknown and making the most of opportunities has been extraordinary yeah. um, I'm getting more comfortable with feeling uncomfortable so I was very much before a planner organized I could look ahead see what was coming regular yeah. income knew what I was doing work-wise and yeah. that's not the case when you're running your own business <laughs> Um, yeah. I can achieve more than I've ever achieved. So I'm living the dream of my 14 year old self. Um, I never thought I'd be a business owner, but mm -hmm. I took that step of faith anyway, and it's the best thing I ever did. Um, and I kind of, I don't know, I've just realized if you're really passionate about something, it's enough to drive you to grow and improve all the time to be the yeah. very best you can be. Yeah. So filling your purpose, doing what you feel called to do is the most incredible feeling. Yeah. So it's not just the external impact you're having but it's a real growth process in you as a person yeah well I love the fact that you found out you're braver than you are <laughs> I think that that's that's one of my favorite things that I've, I've heard somebody say really yeah genuinely because I mean even when Don, Don Armand I met him at a networking event and I was just like right I'm gonna go and talk to him and he was fab and he loved what rephrase was about yeah and then he ended up endorsing the business which is incredible but you know, I could have just gone, no, I'm not going to talk to him, you know, but actually... He's too important or whatever, yeah, he is, yeah. Yeah, yeah he was a bit yeah. of a celebrity, and I, I just thought, actually, he was working with young people as well, and I thought, let's just chat, and it was brilliant. So that's just yeah. one example of where I put my big girl pants on and went out there. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Yeah, absolutely love it. And, I mean, if somebody then were 
were, were to say to you something like, I'm thinking of starting a business or I've just started or, you know, somebody was right at that sort of embryonic phase, maybe not even, you know, whatever, but, but they're in that sort of process of considering or starting a business. What, what advice do you think you'd like to give to them? Um, I found um, right at the beginning, I found myself playing with potential names for a business, even when <laughs> I was saying to myself, you're not going to do this. No, you've never wanted to run a business. And I was <laughs> with two little voices going on. Um, <laughs> but I was thinking about the thing that I do for free. So that was how I absolutely knew this was the passion and this is what I wanted to invest my time in. Right. So think about what you would be willing to do for free. And if that is a genuine thing, that is probably the thing you should be doing. Um, I love that. And also, the day you plant the seed is not the day you eat the fruit. Yeah. I mean, I'm the sort of person, I like to do everything yesterday, you know, and actually I've had to be patient. I've had to learn it's okay to have quieter days or it's okay to have admin days or social media days rather than being client facing all the time. And actually prepping workshops is absolutely investing in the business or, yeah. you know, meeting people. Um, I've, I've done, like, I've talked to Alabama students about stuff. That was all for free. But that was yeah. great publicity yeah. um, and a podcast in Taiwan about social issues. All yeah. of that is free. But actually, it's all, it, I had to kind of come to that place where I was comfortable with that going. Actually, this is all about still building the business yeah. and yeah. developing the reputation and what this is all about. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, just that kind of everything you do for your business is investing in it. Yeah. Um, also, imposter syndrome is very real, uh, but it's not unusual. Oh, so. Yeah not alone and i've heard of brain surgeons who still experience it so i'm kind of like right fine <laughs> we'll just go with it um yeah. i'd say get some great cheerleaders around you because sometimes it's a lonely place um you know if it, my meetings consist of me myself and i talking to myself and you right. know it's just kind of like it's yeah. really great actually talking to other people and having that support as well mm. And um, sort of, uh, just while we're on that, which communities and groups and so on that, that you're part of, you know, people, if they're specifically in Devon or the Southwest and so on, have you found you've, you've been able to get it, that support? Yeah, it's broad. It's broad. So I've got a mixture of people, obviously, you know, friends, family have been great from the outset. Um, but professionally speaking, I've got connections with an organisation in London, Asset. And so that's been amazing being part of that network, networks where the training happens initially. Um, and then I've got other contacts who are doing similar roles, but not the same, scattered around the country. So we've all got our kind of specialist area, if you like. Yeah. Um, one of them is in Hampshire, but she focuses on sexual health. Um, so I cover sexual health, but I'm much more relationship orientated. So okay. it's just a variety of people. Yeah, no, fantastic. Yeah. Um, speaking of people, I would say relationships are absolutely key because I found that people engage when they like you, they trust you and they recognize you add value. So focus mm. on investing in people. And if you can meet in person, meet in person. Like, I mean, I know Zoom's great, but it's not the same. So I found that every time I've met a client, it's been amazing because, you know, you actually connect with the person, you invest in each other and then you kind of off you go. So yeah. brilliant. Yeah, um, I agree with that. And then... Two other things I'd say, growth mindset, can do attitude, really important, like telling yourself, saying it out loud. Yeah. And also, if I don't know it now, I can, I can learn something, you know. Yeah. And then stepping out of the comfort zone, it's the most scariest thing you can do, but it's one of the best things you can do when you're running a business. And the yeah. opportunities that I've had have blown my mind. Um, and I'm working with amazing client groups that I never thought I would. So Yeah, no, great. fantastic. I think that growth mindset as well. I've I've really I've done something which I've kept going, you know, since leaving teaching. It's trying to kid in, in my own kids. If they say I can't do, any, you know, whatever, I always force them to use the word yet. Yeah. So I said, you know, I can't do that. So I say, yep, yet. And that, you know, I, I just like that idea that actually it's, um, well, yeah, the growth mindset, the, the attitude that actually you're not fixed in your abilities you know you, you're able to develop and and i think you know huge well done to you for the, the times you have stepped out of your comfort zone and you've put yourself out there and you, you're doing something now that that you know deep down you feel really fulfilled and you know off the top of your head do you have a number for the number you know for how many people you've worked with and helped over the last few years no, it's, i'd have to look back at the spreadsheets <laughs> it's, be, it's not it's not in the hundreds is it it would be thousands really 
I don't know, to be honest. I mean, I know it varies because, for example, working with the police, that was a lot of staff. So that was all and lots of different officers and support staff working different roles with young people. Yeah. So that yeah. was a, a vast thing. And then, you know, speaking to other people, it's just depending on the scale. The scales vary from very small, like a group of six young people. Yeah. Right up to halls full of people. So I don't yeah. know. Interesting question. Holes, holes full of worlds that you've had an, an impact on. So that, that, that must Hopefully. Sort of, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Well, PJ, it's been great speaking to you. It always always is. Uh, we haven't spoken face to face in quite a long time now, so we'll have to make sure we grab a coffee soon. Um, but thanks so much for coming onto the podcast. It's always great to speak to you, and I'm sure there'll be people watching this thinking I need to chat with PJ um, because thank I you know. For having me. I know a place or I know some people that need need some help with that. So thank you so much. Hope you have thank a good you. rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.